Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday. It is the 15th day of February 2022. I hope this Tuesday finds you healthy and COVID free. I hope this Tuesday finds you as well as your family and your household healthy and COVID free and that the needs of you and your household in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and those who are the first responders trying every day to save lives. Blessings also uh, upon the family of the young Asian woman that was stabbed to death in Chinatown two days ago. Uh, just the blessings upon them. Unfortunately, um, murder is happening on a daily basis. Also, blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep our streets and sidewalks clean. Blessings also upon those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women also who are trying to rescue, deliver, arrest, rescue, deliver uh, boys and girls, men and women, children, who are the victims of prostitution and child prostitution? Who are the victims of pornography and child pornography? Who are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia, human trafficking, sex slavery? Going on in every state in the United States. And double curses on the perpetrators, the perverts, and the profiteers who traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings on the homeless. There are 600, nearly 600,000 people on the streets today in the United States who don't have a roof over their head, including men, women, and children. And there are millions of human beings around the planet Earth in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, there was a basketball game last night. Our New York Knicks lost in overtime to the Oklahoma City Thunder, 127 to 123. Now, couple things, couple things. First off, um, you know, I know that every loss, you know, where the Knicks well, for whatever reason, people say this is the worst loss of the season. We've had a lot of those <laughs> this season. A lot of worst losses of the season. And in my mind, this is really no different. Um, we're now, the Knicks have played 58 games um, this season and lost 33 of them. We're real, we're way past the point where we need to let the starters job. I mentioned this before. We're past the point where we got to see what the rotation is used to doing. We're past the point where we could talk about the schedule. We could talk about injuries. Every NBA team has to go through the same thing. At the end of the day, every NBA team plays the same number of home games and the same number of away games. Every NBA team has rough road trips. Every NBA team has to deal with injuries. It happens to every team. So we can't use those things as a reason why the Knicks are having such a bad season. And when I say bad, it's relative because it was only two or three seasons ago we were getting 17 wins and 21 wins in a season, right? So we're probably on pace, as I said yesterday, to get about 35, 36 wins this year. So, but relative to what we saw last year, this is a bad season, okay? Relative to the hopes we had about this year, including myself, about where we thought the Knicks could go with the talent they have. Uh, this is a bad season. It's one of my subscribers, and I don't remember which one, honestly, but one of y'all wrote, if some other team or some other coach had the talent level we have, they'd be winning a lot more games with the talent we have. And I think that sums it up. The Knicks are a talented roster. They're just not being played properly. Now, um, in terms of Tom Thibodeau, I mentioned to y'all yesterday, I've mentioned it multiple times, so you guys know what I'm about to say. Um, I want to see one coach last more than two seasons. 
you know, because we haven't had that in a minute. Um, and I agree. This is getting ridiculous. It's, it really is because, and what I'm saying is like, like, yeah, like his press conference yesterday. Um, in the press of it, they said, he said, this is what he said. Um, we get our defense. We have to fix our defense. That's the word he used. We have to fix our defense. Now, let's just talk logically for a second. If you're a basketball coach, and you have a problem, in this case, let's say he said defense, okay? And you said you have to fix it. What does fix mean? I mean, you have a few options, right, to fix your defense. One of your options is you go back to the practice facility and you work on your schemes and maybe people are missing assignments and you review those assignments, you watch film and you have your assistant coaches deal with the players so that everybody is on the same page defensively and everyone knows what they have to do. And then once you do that, this is just one of the ways and you find people are still not doing what you need them to do for a successful defense, you replace them with somebody else who probably wants to get time and will do that. But it's hard to for that solution to happen during the course of an NBA season. You don't get as much practice time as you get in the off season. You know, in the off season in the summer in training camp, you know, those are when, you know, your 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 closing interviews with your coaches at the end of the previous season. That's where you want to Set the standard, set the basis, set the foundation for the principles you want to play on the defensive end. So you can't really do that. The thing else you, you, you want to do, maybe if you can't practice your way out of it, is you change your personnel. Again, you study the film and you see where the weaknesses are and you look at the analytics and you say, Oh, our defense plays better. When this group of guys is playing and you make the changes. But I will tell you, and maybe this is me, Knicks Nation. You could tell me if I'm wrong. I'm no genius. I'm definitely not an NBA head coach. So I would think that one thing you cannot do and improve your defense is keep trotting out the same rotation. I would think that if your defense is bad and you say you got to fix it, that that requires some sort of change. I mean, am I wrong? So you would think, okay, we just gave up 127 points to a rookie team. A rookie team who are missing two of its best players. A team that prior to last night had only won 17 games. So you're thinking, I must make changes. I mean, am I wrong, Nick? So if I keep coming to the podium night after night and saying we got to fix something, but I keep putting out the same players and nothing changes, something is wrong. And so I, I think we can all see Something is wrong. Listen, last year's team had a lot of flaws, right? Reggie Bullock could not go to the basket off the dribble. Alfred Payton could just basically dribble the ball up and hand it to Julius Rand. R.J. Barrett went through stretches where you would have thought he was legally blind and Ray Charles could have shot the ball better. All that happened last year. And yet, what you could count on last year was a ferocious defense. That's what you could count on last year. Okay? For all of the flaws, everybody that came to Madison Square Garden last year knew they were going to face a very tough defensive unit. And knew that they were going to face, on top of that, a second wave of players coming off the bench on mob deep that was going to be difficult. Everybody knew that. 
This year, no team is worried when the Knicks get a lead. No team is worried. This night wasn't the worst loss of the year. Neither was Portland. We've had that before, y'all. We've seen that movie already this year. Okay? Maybe not to the extent of a losing a 23-point lead, but we've lost leads many times this year. Okay? So, and it's not offense. And this is, again, basketball is played on two ends of the floor. Championship basketball starts on the defensive end. NBA champions are always good to great defensive teams. Okay? And why? Because in crunch time of close games, what you always need is a stop. Okay? You need a stop. That's professional basketball. Okay? And there's too much focus on offense, in my view. You could, you know, and basically, let's go to the extremes. There's been, back in the day when I was younger, there was a team, the Denver Nuggets were known as like a high-flying, high-scoring team. They had a coach named Doug Moe, and this was offense, 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 and they would outscore most opponents on most nights. Never win the championship. Be exciting to watch. But never win the championship. Okay? Phoenix. When Amari Sotomayor was young and they had Steve Nash and they were seven seconds or less, exciting basketball to watch. Really was. Never win the championship. In both cases, why? Because when you're playing a really efficient team at crunch time, you need a stop. You could have a lead, but you can't keep it if you can't make stops. Okay? And then secure the basketball on the defensive rebound when you make the stop. All championship teams do that. Now, I'm not suggesting the Knicks should be a championship team overnight, but you're looking for a progression on that, in that area. Not a regression. Okay. Now we could blame Tibbs. We could blame Raw, Leon, whoever you want to blame. The result is what it is. So now at this point, the movie is so old in terms of the repetitiveness of this. We have to fix this and then doing the same thing. It's gotten to the point where stubbornness has now crossed over to stupidity. Stubbornness has crossed over to stupidity. Okay. This is the time when your general manager, your president of basketball operations, and then your owner will have some questions that need to be answered. Okay? And we got to fix, ain't, and they're going to cut it because we ain't seeing no changes. All right? So, again, it's like this. (laughs) There was a comedian once. And he was talking about O.J. Simpson. Now, many of you are maybe too young to remember. But in 1994, O.J. Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and another young man, Ron Goldman, were found hacked up to death. In fact, Nicole Brown Simpson's, uh, Simpson's head was almost completely severed. There was blood everywhere. Um, and actually, the kids were in the house. It was a gruesome murder. And they charged O.J. Simpson with the murder. Now, during the course of the trial, I mean, well, eventually O.J. was acquitted on all charges. Okay, so he's found innocent. But there was still a lot of people, including the Goldmans and the Browns, that said, you know, we believe O.J. really committed the murders and he just got off on whatever. During the course of the trial. There was evidence brought up against O.J. Simpson. And one of the evidences was um, Nicole Brown Simpson had to call the police because he was yelling and screaming in the background. He had hit her. And uh, in, in, in during the 911 call, you could hear him, you know, yelling in my house and blah, 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 blah. And nobody, you know, and so he just became this, you know, enraged black man that was dangerous and beating up this poor little blonde haired white girl, right? But then it came out. Why? 
Why was he acting like that? What happened? Apparently, he was coming to see his children. Even though they were divorced, he could see his children. And his children were there. While their mother was performing, let's say, pornographic acts on some man. In the house with the kids there. Apparently, this wasn't the first time. And apparently, OJ lost it. Like, you know, DMXA, you know what DMXA, y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here? Y'all gonna make me act a fool up in here? You gonna make me go all out up in here? And then sometimes, you know, so the comedian was going through this, right? Not laughing at the deaths, believe me. But the comedian said, I ain't saying he should have killed him. But I understand. That's what he said. I ain't saying they should fire Thibodeau. But if they do, I understand. That's what I'm saying. I ain't saying they should fire him. But if they do, I understand. Okay. Um, to me, Deuce McBride is now become a sign. What do I mean by that? If you wanted, to, if you turn on your TV or your computer or your social media tomorrow or today, and it is announced that Deuce McBride is the starting point guard. You will then know that a change has been made. Correct? I mean, that would be, and I'm, I'm saying not with Kemba Walker hurt, not with IQ hurt. No, Deuce is the starting point guard. Then you'd see that that's a change. And why do I mention Deuce McBride? He's the sign because Tibbs keeps saying we have to fix the defense. Say what you want about Deuce McBride. If you've ever actually bothered to watch more than just a few minutes of him in terms of his uh, uh, history, his basketball style, his talent, you would know he plays very hard-nosed defense. He picks up the opposing players 94 feet. That's the way he plays defense all the time. Okay? Like I said, you may like him or don't like him. But if you're telling me we need to fix our defense and you have this kid that's a defensive ace sitting on your bench, I don't know what you're changing. And this whole I got to go with vets because I want to win now thing is also getting old and tired. Okay, so to me, Deuce is going to be the sign. He's playing Cam Reddish, but he ain't played him eight minutes yesterday. Whereas he played Randall 45 minutes, Robinson 41 minutes on a bad ankle. And if we didn't have him, we'd have got blown out. If we didn't have Mitch Robb yesterday, we'd blown out. Mitch Robb and Grimes, that would, we'd have got blown out by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kemba Walker played 26 minutes. Fournier played 45 minutes. Grimes played 40. And you play Obi Toppin eight minutes? And you play Cam Reddish eight minutes? And you play Emmanuel quickly 14? Emmanuel quickly. This has become a common stat line. Zero of seven from the field. Zero of five from three. Minus five. Five assists. That's become a common stat line for him. Only difference is now he's, he's not even playing good defense. He's not even playing good defense. Scrubs are abusing him. Okay. Alec Burks plays 27 minutes, three for 11, one of five from the three point line, four or five from the three. He scores 11 points. He's minus nine. Obi Toppin plays eight minutes and gets seven points in eight minutes. So I ain't saying they should fire him, but if they did, I understand. Okay? I understand. So, I'm expecting 
Mount Dolan to erupt anytime now. It's been so quiet. See, a lot of y'all saying, well, man, we would like to hear from what you know, what does Leon have to say? What does Scott Perry have to say? You remember when uh, the Knicks were stinking up the joint when they got like a million power forwards and they <clears throat> and they were losing on losing and losing. And David Fisdale was the coach. And uh, all of a sudden, Steve Mills and Scott Perry came out early in the season and said, this is not acceptable. Well, Leon not operating like that. And, that, and see, this is uh, and they were criticized for doing that. <laughs> So if I'm Leon and them, I don't want to talk to me to you. But you got to believe the quietness is before a storm. And Mount Dolan is getting ready to erupt. And I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. I don't know. I can't tell you what's going to happen next. But I do tell you this. There will be change. There's going to 100% chance something's going to change. And then the fact that they didn't move anybody at the trade deadline. And they come out with the same crew and perform the same way. Something is getting ready to happen. Okay. Um, and we're going to see. We're going to see soon. Like I said yesterday in yesterday's video, I told you about five games, now four. You're going to see, you're going to see if this thing starts to change. You know, we're going to see the Golden State Warrior win Knicks or we're going to see the Oklahoma City lose Knicks. I think it's more the latter. Okay, so like I said, you'll win two, lose three. That's generally how it's going to work. Um, right now, it's not even that, but the Knicks are, I think, two, one in nine in their last 10. So uh, we'll see. But there's 100% Knick Nation. There's going to be a change. It's going to happen soon. Um, you know, somebody could say, well, let's let Derrick Rose come back. Now, listen to when somebody says that. This is the last thing I would say today, but listen to what somebody says that we need Derrick Rose to come back. Think about that. Is Derrick Rose like Michael Jordan? Is he Giannis Antetokounmpo? Is he, you know, is he uh, Joel Embiid? Or Kevin Durant? Or Stephen Curry? I'm not saying D Rose is no scrub now. No, no, he's still a very good basketball player, but he's 33. Past his prime, right? And best suited coming off the bench. You don't want to play him two minutes because you'll end up with this situation again. You'll be out for something else. Okay? And you're waiting on him to save your season? What does that tell you about your season? Come on. So, we're going to see what happens. But something is going to happen. It's going to change. 100%. There's no doubt. And it's not going to be long. We're going to see. But it's not going to be long. And like I said, Deuce becomes the sign to me. He becomes the sign. When you see him playing, that's when you're going to see change. Not, I'm, just, I'm not saying they're going to go on a 10-game winning streak. But then you're going to, to me, Deuce McBride represents, let's play the young people. Let's see what we have. Let's develop. That's what that represents. And so I'm waiting when we're going to see that. We're going to see. But I think it's going to be sooner than later. All right. Please. Uh, they're going Wednesday night against Brooklyn. I don't know what's going to happen. If, if Simmons plays, we might get blown out. If Simmons doesn't play and Kyrie Irving plays, he might get 60. Uh, we might be up 20 and lose. I don't know. We might win. I don't know. At this point, it's almost irrelevant. I'm going to watch them because it's my team. But... Anyway, y'all have a really good Tuesday. Be safe out there. Be safe out there. There's a lot of bad things happening on the streets today. So be safe out there. Be cool. Enjoy. Shalom.